you are here today and you will not miss your miracle in jesus name why don't we pray together father in the name of jesus we thank you for your children happy righteous holy heavenly children we just pray that your blessing will be abundant in every life in jesus name lord i pray success in every life victory in every life joy in every life we banish every work of satan we destroy every work of satan dry all their tears in jesus name and we pray your children will not miss their miracles in jesus name we thank you because we know you have answered in jesus name we pray thank you very much you can see now we're looking at the word of god victorious personal experience victorious personal experience when you come face to face with God, the God of miracles, you come face to face with miracle, face to face with success, face to face with salvation, face to face with the good things of the Lord. We're looking at Isaiah chapter 45, and I'm reading from verse 22. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 22. Look unto me, face to face. Look unto me, and be you saved all the ends of the earth for i am god and there is none else i'm going to read that verse again you see that what they are saved is a kind of broad word it's an all-round word it's a word that is all sufficient it actually means salvation for your soul for your spirit for your body it means salvation in all, we say, permit me to use this word, in all ramifications. That means it's global. That means it is total. That means it is everything. Therefore, now understand, look unto me and be ye healed all the ends of the earth. For I am God and there is none else. I'm going to read it again because I just told you now the word salvation is deep is high is broad is long is extensive is expansive therefore i'm reading i said look unto me and be ye delivered all the ends of the earth for i am god and there is none else everything you need you'll find in jesus everything you need you'll find in god and he says look unto me and be saved Look unto me and be healed. Look unto me and be delivered. Look unto me and be blessed. Blessing in your soul. Blessing in your spirit. Blessing in your school. Everywhere you go, blessings will run after you in Jesus' name. Look unto me. Here is the Almighty God talking to you. He says, come and have a victorious personal experience. As we think about looking unto the Lord, it's not just looking ordinarily. Number one, look. Number two, listen. Because he's going to talk to you. You will hear him. I said you will hear him. Number one is to look. Number two is to listen. Number three, learn. You know, there are many, many young people, they look, they listen, they learn nothing. And because how do you know they don't learn? Because if we listen and look and look and listen and learn, there'll be a change. There'll be a transformation. I say change your life already. Amen. From darkness to light. From poor to prosperity. And then from sadness, we're going to get to gladness. And something good is coming upon your way in Jesus' name. Amen. You look, tell me the next thing. You listen, tell me the next one. You learn, you lean, you lean on the Lord because He is the rock of ages. He is our refuge, He is a fortress. I can lean upon Him. You know, sometimes you are walking in life, you are tired, you want to lean on somebody. And sometimes you're going through life, and life is not dealing, you know, something good. You can lean on the Lord. And as you come to lean on the Lord, it will support your weight. You will not be disappointed in Jesus' name. I look. Tell me, I listen. Tell me, I learn. Tell me, I lean. 
I live, I live. You see, there are people, they think they want to live. They say, I'm living my life. No, you're not living your life until you meet the Lord Jesus Christ. You don't know what life is because he is the way, the truth, and the life. If you're going to live and really live, live now and live eternally and live with real zeal and with real passion excitement and passion in your life that you really enjoy living you need to come to the lord that's why we say face to face with the god of miracles because it's the one that gives you life it says i am the resurrection and the life resurrection life will come to you today a kind of life that will never know any kind of defeat, any kind of weakness, any kind of sickness. If you're sick, you're healed in Jesus' name. I'm looking, I'm listening, I'm learning, I'm, le I'm, I'm leaning, and then I'm living that I love. You see, when you come to the Lord, face to face with the Lord, and you see the glory of the Lord, the love of the Lord, the grace of God, the mercy of God for you, there is just one thing for you to do in response to that. You want to love him. There's nobody that can really look at the Lord and not love the Lord. When you look at beauty, you love beauty. When you look at glory, you love glory. When you look at wonder, you love wonders. I will love the Lord more. Of course, he loves you because God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him will not perish. You will not perish. But you will have everlasting life in Jesus' name. Now as you look and listen and learn and lean and live and love, you let God have his way. Let God have his way. He will clear the way for you. You see, when the road is appearing kind of a block, and then they say there's no way there, let God, let go. And if you let God, he lets you go. You'll go everywhere, you'll succeed in Jesus' name. Now you're going to give it to me. Number one is to look. Number two is to listen. Number three is to learn. Number four is to lean. Number five is to live. Number six is to love. And then number seven is let God have his way. The Lord will have his way in your life. If you let him have his way, he will save you. If you let him have his way, he will heal you. If you let him have his way, he will deliver you. If you let him have his way, blessings will never stop in your life. Look unto me and be ye saved and be ye healed and be ye delivered and be ye blessed all the ends of the earth. For I am God and there is none else. Give me a good amen there. Three things we're going to look at. What's my topic? Tell me out loud. Victorious personal experience. That means you come face to face with the Lord. You use your own eyes of faith and then you look at the Lord yourself. Daddy cannot do this for you. Mommy cannot do this for you. Teachers cannot do this for you. You have to look yourself. You know, sometimes I say, I see, I see. And then somebody says, Let me borrow your eyes and so that I can see what you see. I say, It's not possible. You cannot borrow another person's eyes and then see what he sees you open your own eyes you are going to have a personal experience everybody say personal experience it will give you victory in jesus name number one looking unto god my savior looking unto god my savior and that's what we need to do in fact many people do not know that you know the lord is our salvation he's our savior it's everything we need i'm coming to the psalms now psalm 25 i'm reading verse 5 psalm 25 verse 5 it tells us here in psalm 25 reading from verse 5 it says lead me in thy truth and teach me for thou art the god of my salvation you see that you are the god of my salvation look at this in verse 5 lead me in thy truth that's why you have those discipleship classes that's why you have bible study that's why you have our teachers who are teaching us the word of god they're leading us in the truth of the lord and teach me for thou art my god the god of my salvation on thee do i wait all the 
day why am i waiting for the lord there's a problem here i want him to solve he will solve that problem there's a challenge here i want to i want him to deal with he'll deal with that challenge in your life in jesus name i'm looking now at psalm 51 psalm 51 and i'm reading here from verse 14 and you will see that the psalmist is still referring to the god of his salvation god of my salvation god of my salvation this salvation is so important he mentions that almost everywhere psalm 51 verse 14 deliver me from blood guiltiness he will deliver you you see there are some people they do not have value for life their own life is so cheap to them and they can throw away their lives you'll not throw away your life if there's anything precious to have, it is your life. I've, I've heard of, you know, some young people that they just say, you know, they say there's nothing to live for. Nothing to live for. Look up. There's a lot to live for. There's a lot ahead of you in Jesus' name. And then they become so distressed and so depressed and so discouraged that they say there's nothing to live for. And then they take their lives, blood guiltiness. God deliver us from that in Jesus' name other people they do not value the lives of other people and they will want to injure them or they want to destroy them you will not have destructive spirit in jesus name deliver me from blood guiltiness O god thou god of my salvation see that again the service is saying once again you are the god of my salvation how did he get to that that now he knew that you are the God of my salvation? Look at verse 1. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according to the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. That's how to get saved. He acknowledged that he had transgression. He acknowledged he had sin. And then he even put it in the plural. And he said, God blot everything away. When God blots all your sins away, there will be no remembrance anymore of anything you ever did wrong. And then he says, you are the God of my salvation. He will be your, the God of your salvation. Look at verse 2. Wash me thoroughly, that means thoroughly. From my iniquity, cleanse me from my sin. He says, I need cleansing. I need cleansing. Then he says, cleanse me from all my sin. When God forgives you and cleanses you and takes all the guilt away, then it means he's the God of your salvation. Salvation is yours. Say, salvation is mine. You repent of your sin, you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and it is there already in Jesus' name. Verse 7, Porch me with Esau, and I shall be clean. Porch me, and I shall be clean. If God cleanses anything, anyone, that thing, that person will be clean, you'll be clean in Jesus' name. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. The joy of salvation will come to you. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all mine, all my what? Iniquity is creating me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. When that happens, it becomes the God of your salvation. And how do we get our salvation? Just look up to him and say, God, I want this salvation, full salvation, free salvation. And a kind of salvation that makes me know that there's a great future for me. I'm going to point number two. Now, before I get to point number two, I'm going to give you three words. Are you ready? Yes. Say yes, I'm ready. Yes. Number one, faith. Number two, freedom. Number three, future. That salvation, we get it by faith. We don't work for it. We don't cry for it. We don't roll on the ground for it. We just say, Lord, I'm sorry for my sin. I abandon my sin. I look up to you. I believe in your faith. That sal salvation comes. Say, salvation comes. Number two, freedom. Freedom from guilt. Freedom from the pressure in your heart freedom from fear that i'm afraid of the judgment to come i've done something bad no god has forgiven me now because of that forgiveness i am free say i am free 
Number three, future. Now, because you put your hands in the hands of the Lord, and now He's leading you, He's leading you to a bright future in Jesus' name. Faith, freedom, future. Point number two, living through God, my strength. Living through God, my strength. Living through God, my strength. He is our strength. You know, if we're going to live, we need energy, we need power, we need strength, we need might. And if we're going to actually live victorious, you know, we're going to stand on our feet and be strong and have the good backbone that can carry our weight. We need some strength and God is your strength. I said God is your strength. And look at this, Exodus chapter 15, verse 2. Exodus chapter 15, verse 2. You're going to see some connection here between the word salvation and strength. Salvation and strength. Look at this, Exodus chapter 15, we're looking at verse 2. The Lord is my strength and song. And he has become my salvation. You see the connection. Number one, there is salvation. Number two, there is strength. You see, there are some people they claim to be saved, but the strength to live, live the life of the Christian, they don't seem to have. They are anemic. They don't have blood. They don't have strength. They're so weak. They don't have any spine. There's no backbone. There's no courage. They compromise with everything and everybody. But there is strength. I said there is strength. And that strength is just in Jesus' name. It says, the Lord is my strength. Who can defeat the Almighty God? I said, who can defeat the Almighty God? Nobody. And when the Lord is your strength, nothing will defeat you in Jesus' name. And then he said, and it's become my salvation. He is my God, and I will prepare him an habitation, my Father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is my strength. The Lord is your strength. Look at Second Samuel. Second Samuel. We're looking at chapter twenty-two here. Second Samuel, chapter twenty-two. He is your strength, and we're looking at verse thirty-three. It says, "God is my strength and power, and He maketh my way perfect." God is my strength and power. Remember, He is your savior. Is your salvation. And then now, he is your strength. That's how we come face to face with the God of miracles. You know, when he gives somebody who is weak, he gives that person strength. That's a miracle. Somebody is sick, he gives them strength in healing. That's a miracle. Somebody who has been battered and shattered by evil spirits and evil powers and the mighty strength of the Lord comes and drives away all those evil spirits and he makes you stronger. You are free. All the strength of the Lord and the power of the Lord and the might of the Lord will so much be in your life will say praise the Lord all the things that tied me all my chains are broken all the fetters are broken and then you rise up in the strength of the Lord and then you move on and the strength of the Lord will never fail in your life in Jesus name look at that verse 33 again it says God is my strength it's not that in the past some people's the good old days when i was strong the good old days when nothing could defeat me but uh, you know, the service is saying these are good days and these are better days coming upon your life in jesus name he says the lord is not that he was not that he will be in the future but god is my strength and my power and then he says and he maketh my way perfect how I praise God. If you know Jesus as your personal Savior and the Lord has become your strength, I praise God for you. I said I praise God for you. It will make every crooked thing perfect and straight in your life in Jesus' name. You'll be happier than you ever were. In the past, maybe something happened in the past. I was sorrowful. I was battered. I was this and that. Look up. Something great is coming your way. He'll make your way perfect in Jesus' name. 
And we're looking at Isaiah now, chapter 12. Isaiah chapter 12. Remember, we're looking at the word of God that tells us very clearly, very clearly and pointedly that the Lord God is your strength. We're looking at Isaiah chapter 12 and we're reading from verse 2 here. Isaiah chapter 12, verse 2. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust. I will trust and not be afraid for the Lord Jehovah is my strength have you seen the connection once again it says behold look at this in my life he is my salvation and because he is my salvation he is also my strength I pity those who are not saved when there is no problem they appear strong when there is no challenge they appear strong and they say what do I need salvation for I am strong already I am mighty already. I'm courageous already. But it's when the challenge comes that then their strength fails them. And their power and their might fails them. And that's the advantage of the one that is saved. Because when that problem comes, the Lord comes by his side and says, Don't worry, I'm by your side. I am your strength. I am your strength. In the school, he'll be your strength. In danger, he'll be your strength. In confusion, the confusions of life, he'll be your strength in Jesus' name. But to see the connection, my Savior, my strength, my salvation, my strength. Come to that again in chapter 12, verse 2. Behold, God is my salvation, and I will trust him. And I will not be afraid, for the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He is become my salvation. It will be that forever in your life in Jesus' name. Now, Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40. If you've never read this, please open your Bible. Read this. This is wonderful. Everybody say, this is wonderful. And to know that this is for you. This is wonderful. This is for you. Look at this in Isaiah chapter 40. It says in verse 28, Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard, that the everlasting God is always there for you? I said it's always there for you. It's the everlasting God in the morning. is there for you. Afternoon is there for you. Evening is there for you. And night is there for you. It's here for you in Jesus' name. Look at this. Any pain in your body, not by the time we finish, you'll know that God is for you. All that pain will go. If there's any sickness, by the time we finish, shall you see this? Every sickness will vanish in Jesus' name. If there's any guilt, any oppression or sin in your life, I did this, I'm feeling guilty. I did that, I'm feeling guilty. By the time we finish and we pray, we look unto God, our Savior. All that guilt will vanish away in Jesus' name. If the devil had been knocking you on the head, you're a bad boy, you're a bad girl, I take that word bad out of the mouth of the devil. And I say, this boy is no more bad. Salvation comes to be good in Jesus' name. That's why it says, Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. Verse 29, he giveth, he giveth, he giveth power to the faint don't faint he'll give you power and and to them that have no mind he increases strength that's the word again he increases strength it is just in jesus name even the youths that's the youths who don't know god the youths who are not saved the youths who think i can do it by myself i don't need god i don't need christ i don't need salvation those youths shall faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fall but this is you now i said this is you now but they that wait upon the lord shall renew what the strength god becomes so strength they shall renew their strength and then it says they shall mount up with wings as eagles they shall run and not be weary and they shall walk and they shall not faint new life has come to you Number one is looking unto God, my Savior. Number two is living through God, my strength. Before I go to point number three, three words I want to give you now because I want to summarize all this in our strength. Number one, fortified. 
Number one, fortified. When we say something is fortified, it is strengthened. Underneath you are the everlasting arms. You are fortified. And nothing will ever defeat you again in Jesus' name. Let anything come. You stand there in the strength of the Lord. You are fortified in Jesus' name. Number two, faithful, faithful. It is the strength of the Lord, the support of the Lord, and the, uh, the grace of the Lord that makes us faithful. And then number three, firm, firm. That, that's the person who's strong. He has strength because of that. He's fortified. He has strength because of that. He's faithful. And he has strength because of that. He is firm. I'm talking about you. I said I'm talking about you. All that weakness in your nature, the Lord will replace it with strength in Jesus' name. Number three now, letting God be my shield. Letting God be my shield. I don't know whether you've seen sometimes um, other soldiers or policemen. There's riots somewhere. And people are shouting, they're screaming. It's like a mob action. And they're throwing this and throwing that. And then the policemen come there. They want to calm everything down. And some of those people are so violent. But what the police people do is that they have a shield in their hand. And with that shield, whatever they throw, everything is being resisted with that shield. And God says, I am your shield. When Satan throws anything, I will shield you. It will not get to you. When evil powers, evil speed, pass of darkness, when you throw anything, I'll be your shield, it will never come to you. Now look at this, God is our salvation. Look at this, God is our strength. Look at this, God is our shield. Tell me, such a person that has God in that threefold way, Savior, strength, and shield, you will succeed. Yeah. Letting God be my shield. I'm coming back to this uh, Second Samuel chapter 22. Second Samuel chapter 22, and I'm reading from verse 3. Second Samuel chapter 22, verse 3. And David, Second Samuel, Second Samuel, I was uh, almost going to stop at First Samuel. You'll get to the next level in Jesus' name. You know, that's simple. They, they, only, they only read First Samuel. They never get to the next level. You'll get to the next level. How many are getting to the next level? You are there in Jesus' name. Look at 2 Samuel chapter 22. And what verse am I looking for? Verse 3. The God of my rock, in him will I trust. He is my shield. He is my shield. That means whatever comes against your life, I praise God for you. You are protected in Jesus' name. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation, my high tower and my refuge, my Savior. Thou savest me from violence. Have you seen again? That's the word salvation there. There's this connection between salvation and strength, connection between salvation and shield. When God becomes your savior, then he also becomes your strength and becomes your shield. We're coming to the Psalms now and I'm going to read this. I know you know this Psalm and I pray that everything in this Psalm will be yours in Jesus' name. You know, sometimes uh, there are people that they may know a particular psalm, but everything in there is not theirs, and it may be in their head, it's not in their lives. Everything in the psalm I'm going to read now, everything there is yours in Jesus' name. I said everything is yours in Jesus' name. What if your teacher comes to the class? And then the teacher said, you know, he first of all talks about himself. I've been to this school, I've been to that college, I've been to that university. I've been for that professional exam. I've got this, I've got this, I've got this. And then you say, why is the teacher talking like this? We know you're already a capable, a qualified teacher. Why are you talking like this? And then he says, wait a minute, I've got this, I've got this, I've got this. And then he says, why I'm telling you all that is that everything I've told you I have is going to belong to you. I said it's going to belong to you. And then as I look at, you know, this psalm, and I say, look at this psalm, and look at this, and look at this, and look at You say, Pastor, we know that already. I know you know. And then I say, but look at this, and you say, but we know that already. I know you know. What I'm saying is, everything in this psalm belongs to you. 
it will be yours in Jesus' name. Letting God be my shield. Look at Psalm 91. Psalm 91. It says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Where are you? You are there. It is yours in Jesus' name. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress and my God in him will I trust everything belongs to you surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the foul and from the noisome pestilence that is yours in Jesus name look at verse 4 remember what you are looking for is your shield is your shield he shall cover thee with his feathers under his wings shall thou trust and, and his truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler. You are shielded, you are protected in Jesus' name. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day. That is yours in Jesus' name. Nor for the pestilence that wasteth in darkness, that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday, it is yours in Jesus' name. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but, 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 it shall not come near thee. It is yours in Jesus' name. Only with thine eyes, the eyes that looked upon the Lord will not see evil. The eyes that already looked upon the Lord will not see calamity. The eyes that already look upon the Lord will not see failure. That's why it says, Now only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high thy habitation. You are living with the Lord already. There shall no evil befall thee. Neither shall any plague, any sickness, any infirmity, any plague, any pain, neither shall any plague come near thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in how many of your ways? All thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Accidents are cancelled in your life. Yeah. If I'm talking about you, raise up your hand. I said, accidents are cancelled in your life in Jesus' name. It is done in Jesus' name. And then in verse 12, they shall bear thee up in their hands. Let thou shut thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder. The young lion and the dragon shall thou trample under feet. They are under your feet. Amen. Nothing will hold your brain. Amen. Nothing will hold your back. Amen. Nothing will hold your tummy. Amen. All those problems are under your feet in Jesus' name. Because he has set his love upon me. Therefore, will I deliver him, I will set him, I will set him, I will set him. Where are you living? Where are you set? Where is your goal? Where are you going? You'll not be in the valley. You'll be at the peak on high in Jesus' name. He says, I'll set him on high. I'll set her on high. And then he goes on to say, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, that's prayer, and I will answer him. He will answer all your prayers. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. Verse 16. Wonderful. Wonderful. I said wonderful. I said wonderful. You know, that sickness will not kill you. 
It has no authority. It has no right to disturb your life. We're going to remove that sickness in Jesus' name. Because look at this. The Lord said, I mean, how old are you now? You say, I'm 16, I'm 18, I'm 20. He says, something longer, longer, longer than that is coming your way. He says, with long life will I satisfy him. I will show him look at this everything is connected with salvation salvation is there strength is there the shield is there it is yours in jesus name Amen. where are you why don't you rise up face to face face to face face to face with the god of miracles open your mouth and touch to the lord in prayer you look you listen you learn you lean on him you live you love him and you let god have his way let god have his way just hand over yourself to the lord lord here am i here am i i hand over myself completely unto the lord he is my salvation he is my savior he is my strength he is my support he makes me strong he makes me mighty he makes me powerful tell the lord tell the lord tell the lord if you have not been saved why are you not saved why are you wasting time why don't you say lord i turn away from my sin i turn away from my evil i turn away from my deception my lies i turn away from my iniquities I receive you now as my personal savior. I believe, I believe Jesus died for me on the cross of Calvary. I said, whosoever, whosoever, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And when that salvation comes, then the Lord says, I'll strengthen you. I'll be your strength. And then I'll be your shield. I'll shield you from sickness. I'll shield you from attack. I'll shield you from affliction. I'll shield you from early death. Long life will satisfy you. Salvation, strength, and shield. Salvation, stress, and shield. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Wonderful. I just love your voice. Can you give me that good amen again? Amen. Praise the Lord. It's bad and eyes closed. You know, I don't want you to cheat yourself. This salvation is so glorious, it's so wonderful that if anybody does not have it, how can you be strong? And you are going to be strong. Yeah. Heads bowed and eyes closed. If you, for the first time, you want this salvation, just say, Lord, I abandon all my sins. And I want you to be my Savior, to be my Lord. This is a great, great moment in your life. I'm going to pray with you. Just raise up your hand. I'll be praying with you. Thank you. God bless you. Wonderful. God bless you. Anywhere you are, day salvation, I want it. I want all my sins forgiven. I don't want any guilt again, any condemnation again. Praise the Lord. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you very much. Keep the hands up. Keep the hands up. When I finish, one of our leaders will come and then he will tell you what to do. But because of time now, I just pray for you where you are. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for these, your own sons and daughters. I'm asking, Lord, all their sins forgive them in Jesus name and I pray that the guilt of sin the burden of sin roll it away from their lives in Jesus name I pray now as they look up to you trusting you believing you forgiveness will come to them salvation will come to them new life will come to them in Jesus name I thank you because I know you have done it in Jesus name we pray you know, whenever you say amen, I just let me take that away from me from here. Give me a good amen again. Yeah. Now, now, praise the Lord. Now, sickness, bye bye. Yeah. Affliction, bye bye. Yeah. Bad dreams, bye bye. Yeah. 
all this thing that is climbing on your neck on your back and troubling your brain i say bye bye to jesus name now if there is any locate any sickness that is there you know already the lord is our salvation is our strength and is our shield any sickness there just identify it i don't want to we don't have the time for me to say number one number two number four number ten or whatever just identify that thing if you've I've identified it and you want us to drive that thing away where you raise up your hand and then after the prayer when you hear the final amen one of our leaders will come and then then he'll ask you where is it because that thing is going Amen. going Amen. going Amen. going Amen. gone Amen. keep your hands up keep your hands up father in the name of Jesus the name above every name the name above sickness the name above infirmity, the name above weakness, the name above failure, the name above affliction. I come in that name and I command that sickness come out in Jesus' name. Pain, I command you come out in Jesus' name. Lord, touch every one of your children right now. Heal everyone. Take all those pains away. Amen. Take all those sicknesses away. Amen. I thank you because it is done. In Jesus' name we pray. It's gone. It's gone. He's your savior. He's your strength. He's your shield.